I think it was quite an interesting project and the reason I wanted to come up here today was was to kind of describe how the project evolved. It started off uh, quite a small idea, planting a little bit of woodland in this valley here and it really did evolve with, uh, in a sort of two-way communication between ourselves and the estate and ended up, like I say, becoming some 50 hectares of new woodland creation one of the largest schemes in England in the in the year that we planted the, the first phase of planting there. Could you give us a sort of a, an outline of what what really you were after from the woodlands at the from the outset, Roy? I mean, when we first sort of looked at the idea of doing a bit of plantation, we we thought about doing it the old traditional way, a block here and a block there, and that's not what we really wanted. And then when we started sort of like communicating together, what we had. The working partnership, I think, really paid off to what we finished up getting. Right. One was to help help it with the sporting aspects of the estate, mm -hmm. conservation, and the, the water yeah. benefits, biodiversity aspects of it. And it wasn't one particular idea of those three what we wanted to concentrate. I think it's A marrying them all, with all, all ah. three together, what works, yeah. and the aesthetics of it all as well. Yeah. Part of the reason I wanted to come back here um, some three slash four years down the line because we planted the project over, over two planting seasons, I wanted really to demonstrate how quickly woodlands become woodlands. As you can probably see as a backdrop, this is definitely becoming a, a, a usable woodland. And from the sporting perspective, you're in here now um, using the woods and, and they're starting to contribute to that objective on the estate aren't they in terms oh, yeah, of creating it, better drives and and high birds and it, cover for for game you look at this and you walk through here and especially in another month when all the when the oak leaves are out and you look at these little oaks well they're not that far behind some of the birch uh, yeah. from a landscape perspective i think one of the the major opportunities in this valley specifically was to try and naturalise the existing woodland on the estate and we discussed uh, at length the, the opportunity to, for linkage between the old and new woodlands. There's three or four very rectangular blocks of conifer that don't really contribute or look very natural uh, in this setting. The new woodlands very much over time will start to shroud those uh, rectangular blocks and, and the linear appearance of the woodlands and make things look like say a, mo a lot more connected and natural and protect the water courses with, with the new planting and try and make a positive impact on water quality for the benefit of this, this specific water catchment. Yeah no interesting looking at this runoff here Simon. Yeah, yeah. Well, the trees are going to have an impact to slow this runoff off and soak a lot of this water up hope. Yeah, in terms of water quality, uh, one of the major benefits of planting in riparian areas like this is that obviously tr the rooting activity of the trees can hold on to the sediment, hold on to your soil, yeah, um, and prevent runoff uh, and sediment delivery to water courses and stabilise bank bank sides where you have erosion problems and can, woodland much like agricultural buffer strips can do a job in terms of reducing that diffuse pollution and, and sediment delivery to water courses. I think what we've noticed this last well, the wet winter we had early on, we had a lot of landslips and where we've planted touch wood, we haven't had any landslips as yet. As the woodlands mature and the rooting activity increases and the root span of each tree knits together, yeah, you'll have that real positive uh, effect in the longer term. How and you get a natural woodland understory and a greater variety and development of the, the shrub layer and natural woodland understory, yeah. and also dead wood and branches lying on the woodland floor. So you'll get that build up of a very natural ecosystem over time. I'm big into the bird life and, and not just the woodland bird life, but the wading birds, and we pick the areas where. Yeah. And not close to their nesting, yeah, nesting sites as well. Yeah. So the, the the woodland was far enough away, and so it didn't become a problem for the wading birds. Yeah. There's that balance to strike, isn't there, in yeah. terms of maintaining any potential priority habitat that isn't related to woodland cover. Um, mm. And I think there's a, a, a footprint in the valley now. We've, we've got to about the right balance between woodland and, and open habitat trees is the main thing but we are we are as an estate we were looking at the the whole conservation aspect uh, 
and we were found that where where our sort of wading sites were are still as good if not better than they were yeah they were before we set off yeah and over time the other development we're, we're looking at is on the scale of planting we've achieved we'll have a uh, an increased habitat for w woodland bird assemblage specifically and, uh, in this instance we used woodland creation planning grant to facilitate uh, statutory um, and voluntary stakeholder engagement um, and sc the scoping exercise essentially um, to, to look at the viability of what we were considering in terms of the planting and where to plant, what to plant, how to plant it um, and I think that grant worked quite well in terms of uh, like say allowing us to engage um, stakeholders, local businesses, landowners, residents within the valley um, and interested parties like the AONB. We're in a designated um, landscape here and we, we needed to make sure that what we were proposing was going to have a positive impact overall. And the other development we've seen really is the uh, carbon markets have started to take, take off. Um, the carbon code's been around for a little while now. Um, but we've seen an increase in carbon values. The price of a, a, a carbon dioxide equivalent tonne uh, has increased quite dramatically under the Woodland Carbon Guarantee, which is the, uh, the government's £50 million fund to stimulate the market, the carbon market. And it basically allows landowners like the estate to access an additional revenue stream. So private businesses that are looking to offset their Carbon footprint, what we got there. You have to get them in jail. Moisture catches. So, if we were to plant this scheme today, um, it would be possible to sell the carbon which will be sequestered by the trees and woodlands as they're established. There's a lot of noises from government going forwards in terms of possibility of uh, carbon revenue from woodland management, so from existing woodland cover. Um, certain management activity might encourage natural capital payments and possibly carbon uh, income derived from existing woodland. Um, so that's another development yet to yet to come. Uh, the woodlands have been planted uh, at scale, and with the 35 hectares or so of existing woodland in the valley on the estate, there is that potential for for some productivity. I know it's not the primary drive every time behind you planting this this woodland but between the existing conifer blocks and the new native woodlands um, as timber grows that's potentially a, a reasonable uh, option for, for generating income in due course well, from from roundwood sales. So I think after three growing seasons to have trees like that is pretty impressive. I it's expected I think Simon but not just the birds you can look at some of the some of the oaks. Yeah. This oak, you yeah. say that's three year old. I wouldn't have believed that when we first started this game. And I'm just shy yeah, of six you're, foot. You're so. six foot six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, eight foot oak in uh, in three grown seasons isn't too bad by anyone's uh, imagination. That's so. a nice healthy tree as well, isn't it? Yeah. Good form Is as that well. What you'd want in a tree. Absolutely, considering we're in a, a relatively upland situation, yeah. uh, the form of trees like that, and you can see it right through the block, uh, is all all good stuff. You know, it's not uh, particularly blasted by the wind, and uh, most of the trees are of good form. Again, that's where the maintenance come in, comes into when you start getting trees getting damaged, is to make sure you address that issue fairly quickly. Yeah. When we first started out with the scheme, the infrastructure of the fencing and the, the gates was something we had to put a lot of planning into. Yeah. It's a good example here of how it's worked with the existing farmland and the gate and the, and the new fence. And then you can see how successful the trees have been behind. Yeah. It's worth remembering that the schemes like this on this sort of scale obviously need to work with the, the remaining grazing land as well. So. We were fortunate in being able to put in some 5,000 metres of new stock fencing uh, on the estate and some 30 plus gates, I think it was, wasn't it, Roy, to make things work on the ground for you and the grazing uh, land adjacent. Yeah, that's helped 
on on not only the, the woodland side but also with them on the on the agricultural side it's helped us with the management side of it. So when we put the new fence lines in obviously we try to respect all the field boundaries and things like that when we were uh, putting the scheme on the ground um, but it's worth remembering with, with planting at this scale um, it's always possible there will be cultural heritage uh, on the site and that was all um, looked at as part of the consultation process as we did encounter some uh, heritage interest up in the uh, uh, on the valley side in the block behind us the large area there um, and we, we, we had a, a archaeologist look at the estate uh, and carry out some transact surveys for, for specifically that purpose to, to see what we had and make sure that, that those features weren't compromised as part of the planting scheme. Sum up then Roy, overall a successful outcome for the estate? Yeah, very successful um, outcome Simon, I think. When we took it on there was there was different challenges that I wasn't expecting. Mm. Um, and all those obstacles with Till Hill's help we've, we've overcome and, mm. and I'm, I'm not just myself but the, the landowner are extremely happy with, with where we are now. So critical question would you have us back oh definitely we, we couldn't have done it without without till Hill's involvement it's you've sort of like kept us where we want to be make sure we we did the right things even some of the things i didn't think was important you've pointed out why it was important to do it it's definitely have you back yeah and well we wouldn't would need you back